What is going on you guys? It is Go. Welcome back to yet another Magic the Gathering video. Today in this video, we're going to be showing off my latest deck, um, the Karametric God of the Harvest um, EDH deck. Before you hop into the video though, if you're new around here, be sure to drop a sub and to check out the Discord link in the bio. We're always up to no good over there and we're actually getting a lot more members over in there. As well, before I start the video, I just want to say again, sorry for the little break that I took yet again when I said I'll be back. <laughs> Yeah, but a lot of stuff has just been happening and just very busy in life and stuff. So, you know, I'll always try to bring you the content when I can. But yeah, let's jump right into the video. So, Karametra is a 6-7 um, a for 5, a Selesnia. So she's indestructible as long as your devotion to green. Uh, green and white is less than 7. Karametra isn't a creature. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a forest or plains card. Put that... Put it into the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle your library. Uh, this is a deck that I built off of a fellow YouTuber, Only Cascades. Shout out to him. I saw his Karametra list and kind of just cut a couple things from it and kind of made some own tweaks of myself. Um, this runs around like 35 lands, I do believe, with like 52 creatures, all like low drops to grab. Um all those lands so you know like turn eight you can have like all 30 of your lands into play the deck gets out of hand really really quickly um it's very very ridiculous uh i currently am like two and oh with this deck i just put this together and finished it so i just wanted to bring it to you guys because i wanted to play test it first because usually my deck techs i just kind of just you know just make and then go and make a video right away but this time i actually decided to um play test it and uh yeah she's actually as good as she looks she's a storm deck and like i said it's not a deck that i've seen a lot of people even build i didn't even know this god existed until i seen his video so shout out to only cascades go show him some love really 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 solid youtuber all right so let's start off with the main thing which is the land base so the land base here consists of i do believe 13 basic forests and 10 basic plains and then we move into um, just a couple lands here that you you can't really fetch up with Karametra because it doesn't um, identify like as a forest plains, but they're just ones to have in the deck. Like so, if you hit, you know what I mean. So uh, Bountiful Promade for a uh, green and white uh, Brushlands is another one of those where for green and white deals one damage to you. Uh, Command Tower is another one of them for any color minus Tirith is in here just because you know you're gonna have your legendary creatures out and then you can attack with them and you can draw a card for two so i mean with the amount of mana you're making it's just you know uh war room is another one of those you pick and pay life and you can draw a card so you're only gonna have to pay two life and three mana which is not really bad at all to draw some cards uh reflecting pool is another one of those you can add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce so, I mean, like that, you can just grab something like, you know, one of those green or white, you know. Uh, and the next one is Gaia's Cradle. This one is actually a proxy Gaia's Cradle. Um, if if you go and look at the Moxfield list that I did up, um, Gaia's Cradle is in the considering pile because just simply, I just don't want to buy a Gaia's Cradle. And it's something you can cut out and the deck goes from like $1,300 to like $500. So, it's it's worth it to cut that out if you don't need that. Uh, got Exotic Orchard. And then we have Radiant Grove, Temple Garden, Canopy Vista, Scattered Groves, and Spired of Industry is also another one. But those are all ones that you can fetch up with the, um, with um, Karametra. Let me just zoom this out a bit. These are all because they're considered forest planes, right? So you can fetch all of them up with Karametra. All right, so I'll put this over here. Let's hop into the actual kind of bread and butter. I mean, those lands are things that make this deck work, but we will go, um, there's not much interaction in this deck, nor is there a lot of artifacts or whatnot. But so the first one is a lapse of certainty. So this one is a, you counter target spell and you can put the spell on top of an owner's library. It's you're playing mono, you're playing white green, not a lot of counter spells, so it's great to have. Another one of those is Reprieve, where you can return a target spell to its owner's hand and draw a card. So if something's get out of hand, you just bounce it. This right here is one of my favorite cards in the whole deck, Clevered Concealment. So you can 
use your creatures because you're going to have so many creatures to convoke it and then you can phase out any number of target non-land permanents which is phenomenal uh spelunking is also another all-star in this um deck so when it enters the battlefield you draw a card and then you put a land card from your hand into the battlefield and if you put a cave that don't really matter but lands you control enter the battlefield untapped so a karametra then when the lands will come in tapped they'll come in untapped so i mean you could just use that mana right away uh, Defense of the Heart, this is one that I added in. It, I just think this one's crazy because if, if you know, if they have more, three or more creatures, you just sacrifice Defense of the Heart and you can go find, like, some of your crazy stuff like Avengers Endicar or, like, um, Crater Hoof Behemoth, stuff like that to just finish off the game. Uh, next, we got Flawless Maneuver. So, this is just creatures you control gain instructable. So, basically, it's just, it's just looking out for your um, commanders. Arcane Signet, this is a card in here that I don't really know if I want to keep in here. It might be removed, uh, just because with the amount of mana you make, there's really no point of having it. Uh, one White Sun's Twilight's another really good one. So this is our only board wipe. It's at sorcery speed, unfortunately. But you gain X life, you create X 1-1 one, one colors, Phyrexian Might, Artifact Creature Token with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block if X is 5 or more, destroy all creatures. So... You're going to make all these mites with poison, and I mean, if you have like 35 mana chilling, or if you have a board state of like 15 to 20 creatures, and then you tap Gaia's Cradle, you can just dump it into here, gain a bunch of life, made a bunch of mites, and then next turn you can literally just swing in for just toxic. Uh, Swords to Plowshare, just another staple uh, interaction card, so you can just get rid of a threat. And Soul Ring. Soul Ring is in here... Um, like I said, I don't know if I will end up getting rid of Arcane Signet. I've kind of considered it, uh, just because it's kind—it seems like kind of a dead card in here, just with for two mana, get one mana. You know what I mean? But <clears throat> let's get to my favorite part of this deck. Let's get to the creatures. So you'll see, there's a lot of one drops, there's a lot of two drops, so on and so forth. So I will just basically show you these, and I'll just basically give you a rundown of what they do. So um, Therabian Inspector comes into battlefield. You make clue token. Uh, next we have Killer Engine. So he's going to let you, when a, when a land comes into the battlefield, you basically can untap that land. So you can crazy combo off with that. Welcoming Vampire. So um, whenever a other creature with power to a less into the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Uh, Aversons Pilgrim, tap for a white. Uh, Ultramarine's Honor Guard. This is basically just going to let you uh, squad. So you can squad so many times if you have so much mana. And other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So it's just going to ramp your creatures hella. You have Shalai, where um, Planeswalkers you control, and you and other creatures you control have Hexproof. Lamar Elves for a green. Knight of the Reliquary is awesome. Gets plus one, plus one for each card in your graveyard. And you can sacrifice a forest or plane. So, you know, you can just sacrifice your planes and go grab a guy's cradle. Uh, Sergeant John, he's just going to let you deal combat damage to a player. You draw um, that many cards. Cultivator Colossus, its toughness is equal to the number of lands you control, so this can get out of hand. Crazy. And when it enters the battlefield, you can put a land into the play, and then you can just keep doing that. And there's ways you can check on the top of your library and stuff, so you can shuffle, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just going to allow you to pop off. Next, you have Sun Titan. So, basically, when he attacks or when he enters the battlefield, you may... Turn a permanent card with converted mana cost three or less to your graveyard to the battlefield. Ancient Imperial Soar, he's one of the win cons in here. He's a trample ward two, and you can convoke him for five. So when he enters the battlefield, he enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters for each creature that convokes it. So he's a six six. So you know, you're gonna get a lot more. He's just like an easy like 16 16. So next we have Selfless Spirit. So he's gonna He's going to allow you to sacrifice him and creatures you control gain indestructible just to protect yourself. Next, we got Boreal Druid, just another little mana dork. Devoted Druid, another mana dork. Uh, Intermittent Adversity, so this is going to allow you to, when you pay two mana any number of times, and you can get <clears throat> that many Valor counters on it, and creatures you control with plus one, plus one for each Valor counter. So again, you have so many, you could just pay into it, boom. Uh, we have Mangara, so he's going to do the same thing. You can exile him and um, target permanent. So he's just good for board removal of like a combo piece or something. And uh, Eternal Witness. So that is that for that list, that pile. 
Next, we have Elvish Mystic. We have Nissa that actually goes into the, um, turns into the Planeswalker version. We have Salvala. Uh, ETBs, you draw a card if it has the greater power, and you can add X Man in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So, I mean, Karametra hits when she's a creature, that's an easy six mana that you can add. Walla Omens, at ETBs, you draw a card. Moonshaker Calvary is going to give you plus X plus X until end of turn, where the number of creatures you control and it gains flying. So, I mean, that's perfect. Uh, jo uh, J Jiraga, Tree Speaker, absolute banger. Augur of Autumn is going to let you play lands from the top of your library and look at the top card of your library. And if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Beast Whisper, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, just pure value. Uh, Vivian, this is going to let you cast your creature spells as though they had flash. So, like, you know, you could just play Augur of Autumn with Viv uh, Vivian and just pop off. Um, an all star in this deck is Silver Back Elder. So, basically, whenever you cast creature spells, you have all these one drops. You can destroy target artifact or enchantment, or you can look at top five cards of your library, put a uh, land card from among them in the battlefield tapped. So, or you can gain four life. Lotus Cobra, um, whenever land ETBs, you can add one mana of any color. Elven Chorus, you look at the top, you can cast uh, creature cards from the top, and creatures have tapped to add of any color. We all know what Finale does. Tireless Tracker, when a land enters, you investigate, so you can just get some card draw. Tireless Provisioner, whenever land enters the battlefield in your control, create a food or treasure. Just use that for a treasure. Avengers and a car make plants. <laughs> Esper Sentinel. Delighted Halfling. Neela is going to let you just have your creature spells reduced, so that's perfect. Um, you can exile the um, permanence when Abdominus Asial. Next we have Shigiki. Panglacial Worm, so you can cast this from your library whenever you play, when you're searching your library, so it's just a lot of fun, so you can get double value off that. Finhorn Elves. So White Mane Lion is, White Mane Lion and Core Sky Fisher in this deck are the best cards in the deck, because with their own ability, you can bounce them. So, you know, you play White Mane Lion, bounce White Mane Lion back to your hand, you would get a land card, it would ETB, so if like Spelunking or you had Lotus Cobra or anything like that, and you're just going to keep playing these and flickering them back and forth. And, yeah, it just gets out of hand. Novice Inspector, credit include, investigate. Gwenna, Elvish Visionary, Spirited Companion. Night Errand's going to let you convo convoke and to grab um, two creature cards with X mana value less, so four. Uh, Vizier of Mangara, so you look at top card of your library, and you may cast top card of your library. If it's a creature card, it's been mana as though it's mana of any type. Arbor Elf. Arbor Elf, shout out to Arbor Elf. Last night, my buddy tried to cast uh, Chain of Smog on me, and I basically untapped, like, the Witherbloom Chain of Smog, and I untapped my, um, the, the Temple Garden to Swords. It was great, and it was really, really good. Birds, Wall of Blossoms, Bramble Sovereigner, Wall of Roots, Greater Hoof Behemoth, and finally, the Goat Scoot Swarm. Yeah, guys, sorry that little ending was just a bit fast. I um, I actually just realized my phone is about to die mid-recording. So, you know, that just goes to show how professional I am at this YouTube thing. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, this deck is crazy powerful. Um, <clears throat> there's always more tweaks and stuff that you can make to this deck if you ever did want to switch it up. But the deck's overall fun. Like I said, I'm 2-0 at the table with this deck, and it's crazy. It's really, really good. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys do enjoy. I want to say thank you for the support lately. It's been actually insane. Um, I'm not too sure. I think we're at almost 600 subscribers, if I'm not mistaken, which that's insane. But yeah, guys, um, that's it for me. And remember, be sure to check out the Discord link in the bio. Drop a sub if you're new. Drop a like. And remember, if it ain't Gawa Gang, it's no gang. I love y'all. Stay safe. And peace.